All right, hope everyone's having a good day today. This is Adam with Groove Automation, making a video for my buddy John. We were talking about poor man's bar puller. So uh, that's kind of what we did here. So basically I took a piece of inch and a half, or actually it's inch by two, and put it in the middle, cut it out so that it would go around an uh, inch and a half round bar and lathe. Uh, right now we're making these little spacers here. See if I can get them in the right place. So it's three pieces per set, so I actually run the three of them in sequence, so uh, we end up with uh, matching numbers or matching sets. Um, it's for an assembly that we sell, uh, motor mount, um, available at hecticparts.com. So anyway, it's enough for sales pitch there. So uh, basically in the program, you can see it there, super special rod puller. Yep. That's it. Uh, I use a different work offset just for the puller um, and I leave it alone basically. So I use G154P1 um, and I positioned the bar three-eighths of an inch out of the jaws and well, we'll just go ahead and run a cycle. Um, well, here, let me go into this a little bit more. <clears throat> so that's the piece we made on the mill. Um, you end up having to take out a section of material there so you can compress it a little bit so it'll grab onto the bar. And I drilled it and tapped it, stuck a bolt in there with a spring, put a little bit of tension on it. So, um, you know, over time, um, the material from flexing and whatnot will lose some of its rigidity and strength. So this way you make sure that you can maintain a decent amount of clamping force on the material in the spindle so when you go to pull the bar out it actually comes out now obviously if you got the money for a bar feeder that's probably the best way to go but um, in this case if you're anything like me didn't have the money at the time when I got the lathe to get the bar feeder so got poor man's bar puller um, there is a little bit of an advantage with a bar puller in my opinion um, I've had bar feeders in the past on other lathes, and uh, you do get some miss pushes every once in a while, and um, some of them can be a little bit more drastic than others, whereas when you're doing it this way, um, as long as you're biting onto the material pretty good when you go down and grab it in the spindle, uh, whatever you feed it out, it's going to be as accurate as the servo movement on your machine. So. Um, you know, if you have it programmed to pull the bar out of the spindle two inches, it's going to be pulling it out two inches. So, uh, anyway, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to have to close the door here and there because some of the tools can't run without coolant. So. First tool should be all right. Come down, turn the diameter, and face it. Yeah, I know I got it running backwards, but that's just you know that's just how I roll sometimes. So that's the first spacer and the second spacer. little spot drill which probably don't even need gotta close the door for this one it get kind of messy if I don't try to drill it without using coolant end up with a drill welded in your material so chamfer and cut off. So there the first spacer is done. We'll cut that one off. There's one in the poor man's uh, parts catcher down there. There's 
part number two. And the last part. So it's two short spacers, one long spacer. Comes down, grabs the bar and feeds it out. And that's it, really. So, uh, and again, you know, Budgetary constraints didn't have a part sketcher either, so I just got them drop them into that. Uh, I don't know what that thing is, some kind of a perforated metal thing. Anyway, it works, gets the job done, and uh, like I said, this is for my buddy John. Uh, definitely not a marvel of engineering, but for what I'm doing, it works out all right, and that's about it. anybody's got any questions feel free to post them and I'll do the best I can to answer and that's it for today